السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the lower limb lectures I'm gonna cover in this presentation The anatomy of the joints of the lower limb I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt In this presentation we're gonna cover the anatomy of the hip joint The knee joint The ankle joint the tibiofibular joints, the subtalar and the talocalcaneal navicular joints, and also the small foot joints. And I will focus on the anatomy of the three big joints of the lower limb, the hip, the knee, and the ankle. The hip joint is made by the articulation of the head of the femur into the lunate surface of the acetabulum. It is synovial ball and socket joint surrounded by a capsule that is reinforced by three main ligaments. We have the iliofemoral ligament which resists hyperextension of the joint, the pupofemoral ligament that resists the abduction, and the ischiofemoral ligament which resists abduction and medial rotation of the hip joint. Inside the acetabulum or the hip joint, there is a ligament called ligament of the head of the femur or ligamentum teres. It runs from the margins of the acetabular notch to the pit at the head of the femur. It transmits the acetabular branch of the obturator artery. The arterial supply or the hip joints is derived from the following sources. From the medial circumflex femoral artery, the lateral circumflex femoral artery, both are branches of the profunda femoris artery, also from descending branches of the superior and the inferior gluteal arteries, and of course from the acetabular branch of the obturator artery. The main blood supply for the hip joint is from the medial circumflex femoral artery. The hip joint is a polyaxial joint, so it moves in more than one axis. So we have flexion at the hip joint performed by the iliopsoas muscle. Its tendon passes under the inguinal ligament and inserts into the lesser trochanter of the femur. Extension of the hip joint is performed by the gluteus maximus muscle, which is the powerful extensor of the hip joint, and also assisted by the hamstrings. The gluteus maximus is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve, while the hamstrings are supplied by branches from the sciatic nerve. For the abduction and medial rotation of the hip joint, it is made by gluteus medius and minimus, assisted by the tensor fascia lata. All of them are supplied by the superior gluteal nerve. Remember that the gluteus medius and minimus prevent pelvic tilt during walking. Also, the tensor fascia lata, together with the gluteus maximus, since they are inserted into the iliotibial tract, they also help in extension of the knee joint. The adduction of the hip joint is performed by the adductors that lie on the medial compartment of the thigh and supplied by branches from the obturator nerve. For the lateral rotation, we have what's called small lateral rotators, as in the pyriformis, the obturator internus, the two gemelli, the quadratus femoris. They are supplied by branches from the sacral plexus and they laterally rotate the hip joint and also one of the factors that help in stabilizing the hip joint. For the stability of the hip joint, if it is compared to the shoulder joint, it is a more stable joint and the factors helping in its stability include the pony factor, which is the fitness of its articular surfaces together. Almost 70% of the head of the femur is in contact with the acetabulum, and also it is surrounded by strong ligaments and strong muscles. One of the main factors that help its stability is the suction force inside the joint due to the atmospheric pressure. The knee joint is formed by the articulation of the lateral and medial femoral condyles with the lateral and medial tibial condyles and the patella. It is synovial condyloid or a modified hinge joint since it allows slight rotation. 
and it is the largest joint in our body. The knee joint is surrounded by a capsule lined by synovial membrane and reinforced by capsular ligaments. On the medial side of the knee joint, we have the medial or tibial collateral ligament. It is triangular in shape, supports the knee medially, attached above to the medial epicondyle of the femur and below to the medial surface of the tibia, extend posteriorly to be attached to the medial meniscus. It's a small cartilage that lies between the medial condyle of the femur and the medial condyle of the tibia. On its lateral side, we have the lateral or fibular collateral ligament. It is cord-like ligament that is not attached to the capsule or to the lateral meniscus. It supports the knee laterally and it is attached above to the lateral epicondyle of the femur and below to the head of the fibula. From the back, we have the oblique popliteal ligament that extends upward from the insertion of the semimembranosus tendon and blend with the knee capsule from the back. The popliteal artery lies on it and its genicular branches penetrate it to supply the joint from inside. Anteriorly we have the ligamentum patelli and patella retinacula. They enforce the capsule anteriorly and extend from the quadriceps tendon beyond the level of the patella. The ligamentum patelli extend downward to be attached to the tibial tuberosity while the patellar retinacula, the medial and the lateral one, extend from the sides of the patella down to the tibia. Inside the knee joint there are structures that help in its stability. We have the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. They attach to the tibia at the anterior and posterior aspects of the intercondylar area. They cross each other to form a shape of a letter X. The posterior cruciate ligament extends upward and medially to be attached to the medial femoral condyle and it prevents the hyperflexion of the knee joint, while the anterior cruciate ligament passes upward and laterally to be inserted into the lateral femoral condyle and the anterior cruciate ligament prevents hyperextension of the knee joint. Inside the knee joint itself, we have what's called menisci. They are C-shaped fiber cartilage discs that lie between the femur and the tibia and they help in making the articular surface of the tibia more fit for the femoral condyles. Each has two horns attached to the intercondylar area of the tibia. The medial meniscus is more liable for injury in comparison to the lateral meniscus because the medial meniscus is attached to the medial collateral ligament so it is more fixed in its place. While the lateral meniscus is not attached to the lateral collateral ligament, but in the same time it is attached to the popliteus, so it can move with the contraction of the popliteus at the beginning of flexion of the knee joint, so it protects it from being crushed by the lateral femoral condyle over the lateral tibial condyle. Flexion of the knee joint is performed by the contraction of the muscles that lie behind the knee joint as the hamstrings, the sartorius, the gracilis, the gastrocnemius, the plantaris, and the popliteus muscle. Remember that the popliteus is essential in the beginning of flexion of the knee joint since it is the one responsible for unlocking of the knee joint. The extension of the knee joint is performed by the muscles that lie in front of the knee joint like the quadriceps femoris muscle which is made of four heads, the rectus femoris and the three pastae. The medial rotation it is performed by the muscles that lie near the medial side of the knee joint like the popliteus, the semitendinosus and the semimembranosus while lateral rotation is performed by the muscle that lies on the lateral side of the knee joint, which is the biceps femoris. For the ankle joint, it is made by the articulation of the lower end of the tibia with the lower end of the fibula and the talus. It is synovial hinge joint because it allows movement of the joint at one axis only. It is a uniaxial joint. The ligaments that support the ankle joint 
on its medial side there is the deltoid ligament which is a very strong uh, ligament and it is triangular in shape attach it above to the medial malleolus and below extend to the talus navicular bone sustentaculum tili part of the calcaneus and the spring ligament on the lateral side of the ankle joint we have the lateral ligament which is formed of three parts the anterior talofibular the posterior talofibular and the calcaneofibular ligament the dorsiflexion of the ankle joint is performed by the tibialis anterior muscle and the long extensors is extensor hallucis and the extensor digitorum longus and also with the perineus tertius while plantar flexion is performed by the muscles inserted into the tendo achilles namely the soleus and the gastrocnemius and also by the long flexors like the flexor hallucis longus and the flexor digitorum longus and of course the tibialis posterior for the small joints of the lower limb we have the superior tibiofibular joint made by the articulation of the head of the fibula with the lateral condyle of the tibia it is synovial plane joint while the medial tibiofibular joint made by the interosseous borders of post tibia and fibula and since these two borders are held together by fibrous membrane so it is a syndesmosis or fibrous joint we also have the inferior tibiofibular joint which is made by the articulation of the lower end of post fibula and tibia and these two ends are held together by fibrous tissue thus it is a syndesmosis or fibrous joint they just allow sliding or gliding movement in the foot we have the subtalar joint which is made by the articulation of the talus and the calcaneus this synovial plane joint we also have the talocalcaneo-navicular joint which is made by the articulation of the head of the talus with the calcaneus and the navicular bone it is synovial ball and socket joint and we have the intertarsal joints between the surfaces of the different tarsal bones again it is a synovial plane joint the synovial plane joints allow gliding or sliding movements while the talocalcaneo-navicular joint it allows the inversion and eversion of the ankle the inversion is made by the tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior while the eversion is performed by the peroneal muscles also we have the tarsal metatarsal joints between the tarsal bones and the bases of the metatarsals it is synovial plane joints we also have the metatarsal phalangeal joints between the head of the metatarsals and the phalanges it is synovial condylar joint it is biaxial joint so it allows movement in two axes and we have the interphalangeal joint between the phalanges and it is synovial hinge joint the metatarsophalangeal joints perform the following movements abduction by the dorsal interossei and adduction by the plantar interossei remember that abduction and adduction occurs around the axis which is made by the second two also joints allow flexion of the toes and extension by the short and long flexors and also by the short and long extensors this is the end of my presentation thanks for listening if you like it please do not forget to subscribe like and share and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know if i upload another video